guess what today is? Ah, it's not my birthday. It's something else. But it happens to be Sunday. And what happens on a Sunday? Sunday school. Ha! Sunday school. That's right. So right now, it is Sunday school. This is the part where you dash off and go get your Bible. Because at Sunday school, you need to have your Bible. You've got to check what I'm doing. Someone will wait. Go get your Bible. And then we'll meet you when you get back. Welcome in the class. Sunday school class. When it's Sunday. I can't sing, I'm going to sing because I love singing and there's nobody here to say I can't sing. Yay! Here we go. Hello, hello, how are you? You are my friend and I love you. Hello, hello, how are you? Jesus loves me, he loves oh. That's what everybody that you all can see. Mm -hmm. Okay, wonderful. Unfortunately, no one is getting older this week, but somewhere, well, that, I mean, yeah, no, no, there's no birthdays at Bell, but I know somewhere in the world, someone is having a birthday. So, because in the spirit of me loving singing, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday. Dear friend, happy birthday to you. So if you had a birthday, hurrah, I hope you had a beautiful day. No, that you are all now. Thank you, everybody. Oh, got an itch. Thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. Really appreciate you being here. Thank you for all the photos that we've been getting. All of it has been so encouraging to see that you guys are getting involved and watching the lessons and doing the crafts. So keep going. Okay, right. Because it's Sunday school, even at your home, listen, because now we're going to do attendance. Now, for some of you, you might know what? This? On attendance? What's that? Okay. If you go back to my video, my YouTube video number two, you will see how easy it is to make your attendance chart. So I'm going to ask Eleanor, and this is the part where you guys at home run off and do your attendance. Remember, check the floor. So, what is the shadow? Huh? I have a shadow. <laughs> Maybe I'm not in class. Just check if you've got a shadow, you're in class, stick up with that. Stick up for your Bible. And remember, stick up for your benevolence. So can we quickly run off and do that? Come here, Lenore. Let's do that on our chart. And you guys at home, quickly go do your attendance charts, please. You should have stickers. If you don't have those ones from Bible, let me know and we can put some in your craft kits. Thank you very much. And then while Eleanor is doing that, we are going to also do memory verses for those of you at home. <gasps> memory verse, yes. Last week's memory verse. Quickly, quickly. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. Quickly, that's it. Pause the video. Do your memory verse with mom, dad, auntie, cousin, granny, whoever is there. Do your memory verse because it's super important. So go pause. Hebrews 11 verse 8. Take it away. Oh. By faith, Abraham, uh, by faith, Abraham went to a place uh, to make to receive his inheritance. As he, that he received as his inheritance. As his inheritance. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he obeyed and went. Right, so, late, so, by faith, by faith, Abraham, Abraham went. To when told, when told to lay to receive his inheritance, and he told to go to a place, and told to go to a place that he later received as his inheritance, he obeyed, obeyed, obeyed and went. Okay, so last week's memory verse, last week's story, we were in a tent for those of you that joined us. We were in a tent because we packed up all our stuff and we just Wait, because remember, God said to Abraham, pack up all your stuff, we're going to a place I'm going to show you. And what faith that must have taken. But before we get there, there's one thing that we have to do, so that was our memory verse. So that was a very nice try, Eleanor, because that was actually quite a difficult memory verse. There was lots to, the word order was quite tricky. So well done you at home, if you also did your memory verse. Why is your benevolence still on the table, Eleanor? It's supposed to be in the box. Thank you, baby case. It's in the box. 
and I hope that everyone is in the box or the packet. Hopefully soon we'll be able to get together, but at the moment it's still only 50 people at the church morning, so sorry, not yet. You're just going to have to watch me. Right, so we've done tenants, Bible, memory verse, benevolence. Tick, 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 tick. Beautiful, right. Bible. The Bible was written by Uncle Charles. Yes? No. No? No. You sure? Yeah. What about Uncle Glenn? No. What about Uncle Johan Pinon? Alayah's dad? No. no. What about Uncle Jeffrey Jack? Didn't he have a thing with that? No. No? Then who is behind the Bible? Who made the Bible? Who made the Bible? God. That's right. God made the Bible. God inspired. And that's a big word. Inspired means God made people, helped people to know what's right. You know how sometimes you just know something? Like whatever you're going to do is wrong. You just know that whatever you're going to do is wrong. That's that kind of thing where God told men a long time ago what to write down. So what is the purpose of the Bible? What's the purpose of the Bible? It's just about what it's to know more about God. Exactly. Because remember, we also spoke about, in one of my previous lessons, we spoke about what it means, what the word testament means. And remember, testament is like a legal term. It helps you to understand what a person was thinking and what they want to have happen with their stuff, usually. Now, this is God's testament. So the whole Bible, we've discussed before, the whole Bible is made up of how many books? 56 books. Right, right. One, two, three, four, five, six. 66 books. And we divide those 66. Now, says and says that book of what? Eh? Tuya Kadil. Yeah? Not in half, as I've discussed before, not in half, in two. And it's the Old Testament, like me, and new like you guys, right? And the word testament means the Old Testament is God's old plan for us. Doesn't mean it's been done away with. It still in, it informs, or that, not that it's been done away with, that it has no value. It has a lot of value. But now we've got the New Testament, okay? Because God tried the Old Testament and it helped to inform the New Testament, which is a better testament. Because some people have lots of rules and testaments, yeah? Now, there's only two in the Bible. The old one is the one that preceded Jesus physically coming out. But Jesus, we've discussed Jesus was there from the Old Testament as well. So we are currently in the Old Testament of the Bible. Okay. The purpose of the Bible is so that we have an idea of what God wants us to do and how to do this thing called life. Okay. Because it's quite tricky. You don't always know what you're supposed to do. And it's really handy. Like, especially when you've got a, when your car breaks down, it's really nice to have a look in the like, Okay, that's why the car breaks down. So now it's yeah. really nice when you've got your life and you go, what's going on? It's all crazy. At least you've got your Bible. On a very serious note, at least you've got the Bible so that you know, you know at home as well, what plan God has for your life. So we are currently in the Old Testament. We've discussed that there are 16 six books in the Old Testament. How many in the Old Testament? Right, right. Who feel in the Old Testament? Pretty nice. See, of course, the last time you put the baby number first and then the big number. 93. No. <laughs> 39 books. So 66 minus 39 gives you 27. 27. 7 total. You see? 72. No, no, 72. 27. Because you said 7 first. No, it doesn't work. That's off card. <laughs> okay, so there's, on a serious note, there's 66 books in the Bible divided into Old Testament and New Testament. 39 in the Old, 27 in the New. Right. We are currently busy in the Old Testament. You know what I'm also supposed to do? I'm also supposed to show you what the craft items mean. Mm. Look at me, but I even wrote it down on a piece of paper. But at least I remember now when I had to tell you. Right, so in the Old Testament, we are now going to do, today, we are moving on. So last week, you will remember, we did the story of Abraham and the promise. First, his name was Abram, and then God told him to pack up all his stuff and move and he didn't say where he was going to he didn't say okay you're moving to Durban or you're going down to Bloemfontein it's up to Bloemfontein I think it's up to Bloemfontein it's up to, up to Bloemfontein he didn't say stuff like that he didn't tell Abraham where he was going he just said pack up your stuff and imagine if I said that to you come let's just pack up your stuff we're going 
Well, what would you pack in? It's like winter. No, just pack your stuff. Huh? One or two things. Huh? Let's go. Crazy, hey? But Abraham, in Hebrews 11, verse 8, what did we read? By faith, Abraham packed up his stuff. He obeyed and he went. Hmm? Now we're going to go into the story because of what was, what was the promise? What was the belofte? What was the promise? That. Because remember the promise made to Noah was the rainbow, that God wouldn't destroy the earth by rain anymore. What was the promise that God made to Abraham? That he had numerous sons. Exactly. Well, not so much numerous sons. He said that Abram's descendants, not necessarily his sons. And this is the thing you have to remember. It doesn't mean he's going to have 20 billion sons. Or 20 billion. Why sons? How about some girls thrown in there? Girls are also important. Girls are also important. Girls are important. It's not so much that Abraham himself would have a lot of sons, no? but he would have a lot of descendants. What does the word descendants mean? Um, children. It's a big word. Like children and grandchildren. Okay, grandchildren. Yeah, so it's children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, great grandchildren, great grandchildren, great children. But so many, there's two things. There would be as many as the stars in the sky and uh, in what others? Stelikis and in and how many sand things? Exactly. The sand. sun, sea sun, so sand of his strand, yeah? Mm -hmm. Sand on the seashore. I wonder why just the seashore. Anyway, that's how many, and it's a lot. And I hope some of you went up and took a handful of sand and tried to count how many grains of. There's a lot. So Abraham's descendants would fill the earth, is basically what God was promising Abraham. Did that promise come true? Yes. You can see with Noah, we've never had a flood. Yes, we've had bad floods. We have, but it's never destroyed the whole planet. And that was what God promised, that it would never destroy the planet like he did originally with Noah. Okay? This promise also came through true because you can take a look around you. Everybody that you see, all of what you can see, all of what you always can see, is of Stamalinga van Abraham. These are descendants of Abraham. So this promise has in fact come true. So what, how does that make you feel? We like your food on TV. That God can keep his promises. How does that make you feel? You like your fool. Yeah. Or like, actually, you know what? Then I can believe the Bible. Yeah. Okay. So that was last week's story. Right. So this week's story, we're now going to go on to how. I'm going to show you now. So this week's lesson is entitled Isaac is born, which is a fulfillment, a direct fulfillment of that particular promise. Right? So this is your worksheet. You've got two other worksheets for the older ones. And as I said, this particular set of papers, they've got some nice little goodies in for you to do if you get the chance, okay? And then you've obviously got your two lots of worksheets, or a spear back sticker, and that will be in the link below that Uncle Charles will put on for mom to download. All right, so let's go quickly over our books of the Bible, and then I'm going to show you what you need for your craft item. So because it's actually quite important to establish the fact that I'm not just yeah. making the story up. At Martha Nelly's story of Nelly, I think it's from the same one. I come from these apps from Martha. So, no, this comes from the Bible. It's God talking to me about something that I need to learn. Right. So, the whole Bible, you know, Bible, it says in Sestach Booker, 66 books, on still the tent here, we divide it into Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament, and New Testament. So, let's do the books. Of the Old Testament. Eleanor, take it away. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings, Second and Second Chronicles, David, Jeremiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Ecclesiastes, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentus, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Job. Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Zechariah, Malachi. And for those of you at home who manage that, well done. Ask mom, maybe you can get a sticker on your chart if you didn't make any slip ups. I like that idea. Stickers are quite nice to have. No? All right, so our story is going to come from Genesis. I'm going to show you now what you're going to need for your crafts. Then you're going to pause, dash off, go get the stuff, and come back with the story. Right, so for our craft today, you are going to need 
Stapler, cookie pen, scissors. Your Ziploc bag, your piece of fun foam, piece of fun foam, your template, paper towel, seeds, water, and I think that is it. I've also got some other seeds, but that is what you're going to need. So why don't you run off and get, go get all those items? Okay? On your box, it. Go! And we're back. Sure. You guys are quick. I've got all your stuff. We're feeling all the quick stuff from me. Just not quite quite like a trail. Never mind, there's something away. Let us do our Bible story. No visual aids this week. You have to just listen to me. I hope you will not be that horny. Right, so two places today. Two plekken. Genesis, Webster 18. And Genesis, Webster 21. So just put Genesis 18 and Genesis 21. Right. Genesis 18 and Genesis 21. Genesis 18 is the promise and Genesis 21 is the promise fulfilled. Right, so let's read, Eleanor. Genesis chapter 18, we're going to read from 1 to 15, please. Okay. Genesis 18, which is right at the beginning of your house. So you just open up your Bible, please. And there it is. Genesis chapter 18, not me. Fine. Yes, I am 18, and I'm not in the north. Okay. Genesis chapter 18, Good. starting at verse 1, and we're going to go through to 15. If you'd like to follow at home, we are reading from the NIV Bible. So Eleanor's going to read for us from 1 to 15. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre mm -hmm. while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Mm -hmm. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried from the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favour in your eyes, my lord, do not pass your servant by. Let a little water be brought, and then you may all wash your feet and rest under the stream. Let me get you something to eat so you can refresh and then go on your way. Now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered, do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three sayers of finest of finest flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice, tend the calf and gave it to a servant. He hired to prepare it. He then brought some curds and milk, and the calf that had been prepared, and sent the and sent these before them. Mm -hmm. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. Where's your wife Sarah? They asked him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there in the tent he said. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah and your wife will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, which was behind them. Abraham and Sarah were very old, and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, After I am worn out, my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure? Then the Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, I will really have a child now that I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Sarah was afraid, so she lied and said, I did not laugh. But he said, Yes, you did laugh. Right. Okay, so this is Genesis chapter 18. What did we read in this portion of scripture? Um, that three travelers came and uh, uh, Abraham prepared food for them, mm -hmm. and they said that. By the same the same time next year, uh, Sarah's going to have a son, which she didn't believe in. Right. And remember, if you remember last week, the story was where God had said, "I will make you the um, that you ha that you will have many descendants, the father of many nations." Right. Mm -hmm. That happened when Abraham was about seventy-five, more or less. We weren't there, so we don't know exactly. What we do know is that the time difference between then. And this fulfillment is quite a long time. It's about a 25-year gap. 
but we can't be exactly specific, but he is older, right? It's a good time, a good couple of years that he's had to wait, at least 20 years that he's had to wait for this fulfillment, right? Sarah, and remember we've spoken about how God uses, you don't, if you have a relationship with God, that's the other thing, just as a side note, God doesn't expect you to be perfect, because here we read that Sarah and I, yeah, now God knows that we're not perfect, but he's still, we're going to read now in chapter 21, God still kept his promise, so what do we, what can we realize, sort of sideways from that? The fact that God uses imperfect people. Who is it that makes us perfect? Uh, God. Exactly. It's God who makes us perfect. Now that's not a license that you can say, oh, then I can just somewhere do anything. No. You just need to know that if sometimes when you do make mistakes, because sometimes you do, you don't mean to, but it does happen. This is just like a little sign up. Sometimes you don't mean to that you make a mistake. You make a fault in it. Does it happen? Please know that God still loves you. And as long as you own it, but I am the protege doing it. Own what you did. God is happy to work with you and forgive you for that. Yeah? But you've got to own what you did. You can't just say, oh, well, I can just do whatever I like because God will make me perfect. Yes, God does make you perfect. But you've got to own what you did. Yeah, but I am the protege doing it. Right. So here's our promise. Remember, originally our promise from here is about. 25 years previously, it's been a while, it's been a long while. Is, do we hear any grumblings and mutterings and going, oh, I wonder when God's going to have, where are these children supposed to have? Hey, do you hear Abraham saying that? No. I don't hear that. Maybe Sarah, yeah, but I don't know. Could be. Maybe. I don't hear any mutterings. Well, I, yeah, could be. I think I've been muttering because 25 years is a long time. So now let's fast forward our story to Genesis chapter. 21. Okay, Eleanor, this is the part where you're flicking back. This is the part where you flick forward to Genesis 21. Eleanor? The Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him. As God commanded him, Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh it with me. And she added, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse child? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. Okay, because you hear how Sarah says how she loved. She actually talks about... Um, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. But fair enough, Isaac's name in Hebrew means he laughs. Yes, that's what Isaac means. Isn't that nice? My name means to laugh, and I'm actually busy. So lucky. <laughs> right, and now this is the part. Okay, so this, before I move on to the part. So just as you know, Genesis chapter 18, Genesis chapter 18, and is the promise, right, where God actually comes. So originally, Abraham, I was going to say Moses, but it's not okay. Originally, Abraham gets the promise. God tells him, your descendants are going to be as big as many as the stars in the sky, sand and seashore. Abraham says, yes, sir. Packs up his stuff, goes. Fast forward now, 25 years later, a couple of years later, Abraham gets visited by three people, and they say to him, listen, by the way, in a year's time, you're going to have a baby. And Abraham's, I, I don't know what his response is, but Sarah's response is, okay, sure. Yeah, sure. Okay. She denies that she was disbelieving, but God is faithful. Go to Genesis. So Genesis, so here's his verse in a Twitter, as he was the belofte rechemak is. Here we have the birth of Isaac. So what can we learn? There's a couple of things I want you just quickly to take out of the story. Who is patient. V is a geduldig person. Ek is nie geduldig nie. I am not a patient person. Ask Uncle Charles. When I have to stand in a queue to wait for my driver's license. No, 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 I'm chewing Uncle Charles' ear. And Uncle Charles is just standing in the queue. Uncle Charles is wonderfully patient. I am not. 
Things have to happen. They have to happen. No. God. Thank you, everyone. God is infinitely patient. You think of all the things that we promise God. I'll be so good. I'll promise to do X, Y, Z. And how many of us actually do that? Just sit, stop and think. We promise God will do this. If God does this, I promise I'll do that. I've done that lots of times in my life. And in some instances, God is still waiting for me to actually. Because sometimes you've forgotten what you said you were going to do. Because it happens. Right? So the point of this story that I want you to take from this story is about patience. Not just Abraham's patience or Sarah's patience. More significantly, it's about God being patient with us. And our response, how am I going to react? How am I going to react to God's patience? Knowing that God is so patient with me. I don't think so. It is amazing. It is incredible that God is so patient with us. Because he has the ability to do other things. Okay? Just go, look. But he doesn't. Because he is a good God. The year is a queer year. And he wants your very best. And so this is the story for today. It is about God has put this story here for us in Scripture. It's not just a story, it's not just a fable, not just a fairy tale makeup. Abraham is a genuine, for real person who exists. He's in heaven right now with God, just so as you know. And so is Sarah. These people are in heaven with God right now. Okay? This genuinely happened to them. So we need God has put this here for us so that we might learn. Learn how to be patient, but also. Boom, geduldig is, maar ook learn to be grateful and thankful. What grateful and thankful for what? The fact that that we can have our God. And that God is so patient. You see? That God is so patient with us. And that maybe, side note, I'm doing a lot of side noting. Maybe if we understand or grow, because I don't expect you to understand them right now. But maybe you can grow into becoming a patient person, being patient with somebody else. Yeah? Because sometimes people just imitate you because they're not moving fast enough, they're not cutting fast enough, they're not reading fast enough, they're not doing whatever fast enough for your liking. And maybe it's just a lesson for us, but it's a lesson for us. Who on geduldig to be? Who on for other means to Because there's something good about being able to be patient. It's a good skill set to have. And in case you didn't know, it's one of the fruits. Where is it? Number four. It is a fruit, singular, of the spirit. So patience is up there. Number four. It's right there at the beginning. The orange. Yeah, it's an orange. Now I'm going to take the pill and orange. Definitely need patience for that. Right. Moving. So enough of me talking. Yucky, yucky, yuck. I hope you enjoyed the Bible story. This portion of scripture that God has placed here for us. Please take from it about being patient. Neem hy so. Van geduldig wees. Die iets moet waag. Nee. How many have to wait for mom? You, Eleanor and Lucy Mae Harrison and Phoebe. Good old, you're not the time. Hang on. And let's not even start. I've got chance. Let's not even go there. Right. Here we go, Eleanor. You need to cut your template out, please. With your scissors. Not just cut again, so cut it out. You also want to cut out your window okay. as well. Please look, I did talk about Kilty Pen, yes. Now, one of the songs they said that I should sing to you this week is Father Abraham. But I sang it to you last week, so I don't think I'll sing it again this week. Our God is so big, so strong and so mighty. Oh, let's do that. That's a nice song. Shall we do that, Eleanor? Mm -hmm. So I do it while you listen to me. My God, it will be my God. Because there's actions involved. Well, I hope I don't see my car. Here we go. My God is so big. It's so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big. So strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, and the valleys are his, and the trees are his handiwork too. For you, my God is so big, so, ooh, so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do 
for you. He made the trees, he made the seas, he made the elephant too for you, my God. So big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do for you. And I sang alone. Eleanor did not help me with that and I was overbalancing there. Did you not see Eleanor? Don't get cut the inside of your house out. Yeah, here we go. Right, Eleanor, so now you trace that on your thumb and phone. Trace it on your thumb and phone. Straighten up your feet. Make sure, see, you fit it nicely. Even the. Yeah. There. Even the cut out, because you're going to see why you're going to do that. Because today's craft is all about patience. Patience, patience, patience. There we go. Good job, Eleanor. Is it a quick craft? You guys should be able to crack this without the help of mom. Too much help from mom. Interference from mom. Oh, it's not saying interference. Help. Help from mom. All right, my family, it's about the interference. Interfering mom. That's me. Or dad. I am. That's what it stands for. Hey, what? What did you say? Or dad. Or dad. Yes, or dad. Yeah, no. no, I shall not carry this burden alone. <laughs> right, then once you've traced that, then you can cut that out there, Eleanor. And then obviously you can see like your points have gone off the side, so you can just trim your roof so that you have pointy points on your roof, yeah? And maybe you want to draw the line in at the bottom there, just to fill that up. So you've got a nice border. And so when you cut now, yeah, like that. And then what you can do is, so you can take your cookie pen, if I can just interfere a moment. So then what you can do is you can just do that, draw it like that, if you know where to cut, you know? There we go, take your scissors, cut that out, nice and easy. This is fun foam, so it's super easy to cut out, you can take it on the side, but keep your cutting pen at hand because you're going to need it just now. Okay, right, so put your house at one side, now you're going to take your packet, and you're going to take a piece of tissue paper, paper towel, so I'm going to give you, you want to fold it so that it fits inside, so you can make a square to make it fit inside and I'll be almost say to you, yeah, that's it, perfect. Yeah, put it inside, then you're going to put it inside your packet, okay. but now fold it in half again because you need it to fit, yeah, like that. Put it inside your packet all the way down to the bottom. I would almost say, just because of who I am, put it like that. But it's obviously your little house. Right, so now we have a selection of seeds. So now you can choose. You can now choose, Eleanor, which seeds would you like to grow? There is some watermelon. There's some radishes. Radishes grow really well. Who actually eats radishes? Not me. There's lettuce. There's some beans. Who eats beans? Me. Not my family. And what else? Oh, some more radishes. Oh no, beetroot. Beetroot also grows really well. So which ones do you think you'd like, Eleanor? Or I can offer you some beans. Some more beans. Some sugar beans. You're going to try what's that? You've got carrots. Okay, right. So. They look like they're beans, but they're carrots, but they're orange. Okay, so what we're going to do is, is, before we do this, you now need to, so leave your seeds one side. So now you've got to get your water. You've got to water your paper. So you're going to open, so this is where you get somebody to help you. You're going to water, hold, hold the packet open. You want it nice and soaked, yeah? Look, don't be scared. It's not like there's such a, okay, no, no, no. All of it, yeah? Just tilt it, some of it out. So basically what you're looking for is you just want your paper, if you take a look, show them on the camera. You basically, if you take a look, your paper is basically soaked all the way through with a little bit of extra. Yeah? You see that there's a little bit extra there. Can you guys see? I'm tilting it back and forth. So not overflowing, but there's a little bit of water still in the packet. Right? Once you've done that, now you can open up your packet. 
and you can speak and now you're going to see sorry so one side of the packet has got a logo and the other side doesn't so i want this side to be on the back so your seeds are going to go on the front so you don't get young so sprinkle your seeds on go in what's it beautiful right that, that's <laughs> your eleanor you've got a heavy hand here babe <laughs> Eleanor was going to have a billion carrots. If anybody's looking for carrots, Eleanor was the place to be. Seal up your Ziploc. Seal up your Ziploc. And now what you're going to do is, is now you're going to take your house. And now what you're going to do is on the back of your house, you're going to see there's a little bit where it can stick out like that. So now this is the part where you take your stapler and you're going to staple your packet in place. Alright. That's it. And that's it. And don't worry, your little seeds will grow because they've got all they're going to need. They've got water, and they've got light, and they also have got the rain. So that's just going to be right. As always, you need a memory verse. Hmm? And then if this bothers you, if that bit sticking out bothers you, you can just trim that because it bothers me. It's just there, man. Right, so at the top there, grab your Kogi pen. Your memory verse that mom knows what this story is about comes from Genesis, G E N E S I S, 18, Genesis, Genesis, 18, and verse 14. In case you're not sure what it says, I'll read it to you. Is anything too hard for the Lord? I will return to you at the appointed time next year, and Sarah will have a son. And that is your crop. Because how long you might be going, it's going to teach you what on earth do seeds have to do with Abraham and Sarah waiting for a baby? Who of you have waited specifically for carrot seeds? to germinate. Last year in lockdown, it took me eight months, and I think I had how many carrots? Three or four. And I had to do, I had to sow my carrot seeds, not once, but twice. And I got pea-sized carrots for all that exercise. So this is a lesson in patience. Growing stuff, growing plants from seeds might seem easy. Weeds are awfully easy to grow. We're not growing weeds, we're growing seeds. seeds Psyches. Hmm. All great is multiple complete. Psyches. That's a whole different ballgame. So this lesson, this exercise, is a lesson in patience. And I want you, now you're going to go and hang this. Uh, what we can do is you can either hang it. What we can do is we're going to make a hole. Where's my punch? That's the other thing you need to do. I don't have a punch on me. Should I have a punch here? Yeah? I know there's one in the cupboard. Okay, so I'm just going to pretend I'm using a punch, a whole punch. You make a hole there, and you should have some string left over from the last time, and you can now go and hang this little, oh, I've even got a pipe cleaner, let's do that. Let's use our pipe cleaner from last year. There we go. There we go. Pipe cleaner, attach that to that. And now, having done that, you are now going to go and hang this. Nice pinky monkey one. Oh, I quite like that. There's a face on. See this? See it? Look what all things See? Wind it around the pencil. Look at that. See? Wind it around the pencil. Whoops! And now you can go hang this. Hang this where there's some sunshine. Don't go hang it in a cupboard. Because where there's no sunshine. <laughs> go hang it by a window and watch your little plants grow. But it's going to take a lot of patience. It comes by a little And especially with carrots, put on waters. So pick something that you know, like radishes, that will actually germinate. But like I said before, you have to eat some radishes. Not me. Alright. So that is our place. Hang it up here. And not the place. Hang it up here. I think it should grow in the Sunday school classroom. What do you think? Mm -hmm. I think it should grow. There you go. There's our house. I will be back next week to see if it germinates. Okay? Let's keep that right. Now, let us dietate funny less. Yes, this is a broccoli. And trust me, I am as, as successful at growing broccoli as I am carrots. But, um, 
avoid any for people who are working in a packet because they're real squished. Yes, growing seeds inside a packet is never a good idea. It's never going to be that successful. Right. Okay, what? Can you laugh? Look at this, it's different because this has got water, Uncle John. It's not a hermetically sealed packet with no water or sunlight. Different story. Alright, here we go. That time of the day, going to take for the orchid. Wow, what a busy morning, hey? Crazy morning. I mean, all sorts of stuff. We've been there, we've been there, we've had babies being born, all sorts of what? Crazy. Crazy how it's on this week. God has time to listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. God has time to listen to me. God loves me. God is listening. God is listening. When you pray, when you pray, close your eyes and nightly. All I am so nicely. Now let's pray. Now let's pray. Thank you, Thank you for this beautiful morning that you've given us. Thank you for your word, which teaches us so many things about how you want us to be in order for us to be the very best that we can be. Or we think about the story of being patient and we know, Father, that we are not often being patient. And we ask that you forgive us for those times. We pray, Father, that you would work with us. Because we know that if we are patient, then probably more people will be drawn to you. Because the world is very fast right now and we want to stuff instantly. Please help us to be your light in the world and to bring people to you. We hear on Yellow, but on the key account, we focus up on smoke, first saunders. Thank you, thank you, your Bible book for us to see it. Thank you that you have Jesus to see it. Thank you that you sent Jesus to us, and thank you for the forgiveness that we have for you. Please walk with us, please forgive us. Consult with us and be here. On the commence, but sick us, on the commence, but means of free will. We think of those that have lost loved ones, we think of those that are ill, and those that have back in the family. Please be especially close to them. We pray all these things in your precious son's name. Amen. Amen. Right, right. Next week, it's okay. See you later. Okay. See you later. Bye. Everyone say bye to your friends. Bye. Bye, friends. See you next week. Bye.